each flop a pair. Slippery check by Phil. Top pair and an open ender. No, you're going to bet queen 10? Not a bad hand, is it? How about that? Helmuth puts this him on his hand. hand. Sexton bets the 800, and Helmuth calls. It's not over yet, though. Might as well be playing face up, right? Check. Six of clubs on the turn. Check, check. And a five of clubs on the river. Helmuth not too worried now. He's going to fire for value. 2,500 from Helmuth. You can beat Queen 10, I guess, huh? Boy, I hate you're going to bluff me out of this pot. Ask if you can beat Queen 10, Phil. You know, you're allowed to show a card here in this mat format. Phil letting Mike stew on this one, and he finally folds. Guess you can beat Queen 10. If a guy calls out your hand and then bets into you on the end, you can pretty much rest assured you're beaten. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Caesars Palace Las Vegas and the National Heads Up Poker Championship presented by GoDaddy.com. We rejoin the action at our featured table where Mike Sexton is up against Phil Helmuth, an opponent he knows quite well professionally and personally, and when he holds in high esteem. Well, ironically, I make Phil Helmuth the number one seed in any big time Hold'em tournament, and certainly this event is no exception. Moving right along, Mike Sexton and Phil Helmuth. So happens that I drew the best of the best in round one, and I'm really looking forward to the challenge. If I had to pick one player to win it all, I'd pick Phil Helmuth. I think his opinion carries some weight, don't you? Yeah, I also think that picking the guy that you're sitting across from to win it all is not the right approach to winning your match. Well, it might not be the best visualization exercise, but so far so good for Mike Sexton. He's holding his own, 7-3 suited. He calls. Helmuth with deuce four. Phil contemplating something, but he checks. Both players with napkins here. Inside straight draws for Sexton and Helmuth. Both players are thinking of a card. Check, check, eight on the turn, gives Sexton an open-ended straight draw. And Helmuth a two-way straight draw. Both players thinking of two cards now. The river's the six of diamonds. You got it. I don't think I can win this one. Four high. Four high? I can, I can be four high. Sexton takes it with seven high. Pays to have a kicker, Phil. You just can't get in there with nothing. <laughs> seven plays, right? <laughs> it does, it does. Not too often you show that down in scoop. And I wonder if you're allowed to ask for a chop pot in this format, see? <laughs> Seriously, if they're letting you show cards, are you allowed to split pots? You're right, I would have taken it, huh? obviously. I would have, too. I thought you'd have had a seven like me at worst. Yeah. Well, I had a double belly buster with a four deuce. So you did. I needed your seven or your three. Wow. That was interesting there. Thought I was stealing. I was betting the best hand. Seven, five for Helmuth. Eight. Raised he raises to 800. Pretty liberal raise there. Sexton with pocket queens, and he's going to raise to 2,400. Sixteen hundred more for Phil to call. Looked as though he was going to move, but he sends something and he folds. Better to give away eight hundred than twenty-four hundred or more. We rejoin the action at the Kaplan-Ferguson match. Gabe Kaplan with almost a three-to-one chip advantage. He stares at ace seven and calls. Limping on the button with an ace. Somewhat deceptive. Ferguson, king eight. Always the minimalist. He raises to 1,300. Not a very minimal play from him here. 
Trying to take control of these pots. Kaplan will call. Ferguson pairs his king on the flop. Good looking board for him. Pretty much air for Gabe Kaplan. Chris bets 1700. Kaplan reaching for chips here. He may think Chris is just trying to outplay him and pick up these pots. He's he going to peel one here, yeah. Trip Kings on the turn for Ferguson. Kaplan's drawing dead, and look at this. Ferguson's going to try to get some more chips out of Kaplan. Check, check. Gabe having none of it. Five of diamonds on the river. And here's the how much can I get out of my man game that Chris is going to play with himself here with 6,000 out there. He bets 5,000. This bet size could look like a bluff to Gabe. Kaplan mucks. Ferguson chipping away at that lead. Kaplan has a known background in acting, comedy, and poker. And today he's merging the three in an effort to get in his opponent's head. I'm playing Chris Ferguson. He's known as Jesus. I'm Moses. He's got a degree in computer science. I can access the internet. I would say Chris Ferguson has no chance. <laughs> Gabe Kaplan trying to brew up the perfect storm to go up against Jesus. He plays a lot of cards, Craig. No stranger to the Southern California cash game circuit. Plays in home games and at the local casinos. 7-5 suited for Ferguson. He raises to 1,500. Four six for Kaplan. Oh. And he calls. Great flop for Ferguson, trip sevens. Dead air for Gabe Kaplan. He hasn't connected at all. And look at this. He's reaching for chips. And he puts in 3,200. Here's what's happening, Craig. He doesn't want to allow Chris to control every single pot with a pre-flop raise, whether he's in position or out of position, and just take down pot after pot. Not that he's shown it, but I think Ferguson more than happy to call. Absolutely, with trip sevens here. He's going to try to get Gabe to fire another bet. Just bad timing, right idea from Gabe, however. Ten of diamonds on the turn. Check from Kaplan. Wisely shutting it down. He's not going to lose any more in this pot. Ferguson puts in 8,000. Once again, Kaplan folds. While it didn't work out, Craig, that was the right thing to try to do by Gabe in that situation. It's just unfortunate that Chris had a hand. No, you didn't have to bluff anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It is true. Yeah. We move back to our featured table. A very different vibe, isn't it, between Sexton and Helmuth? They seem to be enjoying themselves. But don't let the lighthearted climate fool you, Craig. Both of these guys are taking this match seriously and playing to win. Helmuth limps in on the button with 9-8. Sexton 7-6 will check. Sexton pairs his seven on the flop, but Helmuth an open-ended straight draw. Small pot poker. The pair checks, and so does the draw. Three of hearts on the turn. The long, deep side you made there. You're going to have me fall right into this trap. Sexton bets 800. Helmuth calls. Call. Jack of clubs. Helmuth hits the straight on the river. Pretty bad-looking card for a pair of sevens. Sexton checks, and Helmuth bets 2,500. Take another one. Just about the last card Mike wanted to peel sense. off. Flushing the straight draws got there, or a busted draw could have paired. Now let's move over to table three, where 2005 <laughs> main event champion <laughs> Joe Hashem's covered. Hashem's ace-queen holding the lead, though, against John Juwanda. And he does the indeed have the best hand <laughs> against ace deuce offseason. Juwanda's pretty smashed pre-flop here. Let's see how many deuce. One or two. Deuce right on the thumb. Hashem gets out flopped and now needs some help. <laughs> it's a talent, isn't it? Surely. Surely it's a talent. John binks the three-outer. Now Hashem the big dog. 
Trip deuces ends it. Jawanda advances to the round of 32. Ugly way to be dismissed for Joe Hashem. Can't do much except walk out. Well done, man. Good luck with the rest of it, yeah? Thanks. If you're Joe Hashem, that's exactly how you want to script your all-in hand. But unfortunately, sometimes in poker, Craig, the deck simply doesn't cooperate. City, a seat at Rayo's is a near impossibility. Here at Caesar's Palace, you have a chance to get a taste of Rayo's authentic and unforgettable Italian cuisine. Despite its grand appearance, Rayo's Las Vegas has recreated the intimate feel of its sister restaurant in New York. And with executive chef Carla Pellegrino running the kitchen, 